If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. Hello again, everyone. Let's Go is back on the air with my co-host, Tom Brady. Tommy, how are you? What's up, Jim? I'm doing great. Great talking to you. Great to have our listeners back. Glad we're 2-0. A lot of good things happening today. So let's start with last night. Last night, you're watching uh, Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. What a game. But you're sitting there, and they play the same position, but it's so much different the way they go about it. it, it it's almost like a, a totally different game. Um, when you're watching those two guys and you see the result, what goes through you? Are you a fan? Are you trying to figure out how you're going to beat these guys somewhere down the road? Or how do you take it in? Yeah, definitely a fan. It's a good question. And I think there's a lot of ways to get the job done. I think what you see in those games last night, and that was really one of the highlighted games of the weekend and certainly ended up being that way. Um, it really lived up to its billing at night. So two really dynamic quarterbacks that have their own really unique flavor to the game. And um, obviously played against Patrick quite a few times. He's such a dynamic playmaker. I would say he's an amazing passer that has the ability to buy time to make throws down the field like you saw in that Kelsey touchdown. And then you have a guy like Lamar who most of his plays are generated with him scrambling and moving in and out of the pocket, whether it's in the run game, he's a dynamic runner. And then one of the few guys at quarterback that can take the ball in the shotgun, make guys miss, and then run for 50, 60 yards, a lot like Michael Vick used to do. There's a lot of different ways to get it done. I certainly have a different way of playing the quarterback position that's unique to me, that works for me. Um, but it does go to show you, you know, even in the same sport, in the same position, uniquely trying to find ways to move the ball down the field and score points consistently. So I love watching those guys because I just go, I, I'm really in awe because it's so different than the way I play and their skill sets are amazing. And again, I played against some guys, you know, again, I'm, as we all know, I'm not a spring chicken in the league. You know, I played against uh, Michael Vick and Donovan McNabb and um, some really electric quarterbacks as well. And, you know, these two guys are, are playing the game at an extremely high level MVPs in the last few years. And they really had a hell of a game last night. It was, it was an amazing outcome. What would have happened if you would have attempted that flip going into the end zone? Would you have been able to get up off the ground? Man, I, I think I could only try a flip like that off a backboard or off a trampoline, neither of which I would try at this point either. Cause I probably wouldn't land them quite the same way, but uh, that was pretty sweet. I mean, that's again, just a little unique flavor. And, and, you know, you see so much acrobatics, I'd say from the receiver position and the, the running back position, uh, defensive backs, Jamie Collins was a great linebacker that's still playing now, but he would do, I mean, 20 flips in a row, 20 handsprings. And, you know, when you see the guys do it in the end zone like that, like Lamar did, uh, he didn't quite land a perfect 10, but I mean, the fact that he could, Get his body flipped like that in the air is, is pretty amazing. So, Tom, is this the new way? Is this going to be the way the game is played in the future? Are we going to see this just continue to mushroom and grow? Or, or do you think that there's something other than a mobile quarterback? Obviously, you've proven it. Aaron Rodgers has proven it. All of the old school guys have proven it. But do you think this is the new way and this is how it's going to go? I think there's probably a lot of short-sightedness. You know, when I hear that a lot, because I, I, I've heard over the years, you know, oh, the game's changing and so forth. And I think the game changes in different ways, absolutely. And it, it evolves and changes and grows. And hopefully it's getting better. And at the same time, I, I, I think that there has always been, you know, incredible athletes playing professional football at the quarterback position. Randall Cunningham was an incredible athlete. Kenny Stabler was an incredible quarterback. Roger Staubach was. Michael Vick. I mean, I don't know if, if there's anyone more athletic that's ever played than Michael Vick. So... I think one of your heroes, Steve Young. Yeah, Steve Young's your... a great example. I just can remember still that run he had against. He's had a few amazing runs, but one where he's stumbling to the ground, spin moves, and running in for it for touchdowns. I think it definitely adds an element to the game. But at the same time, you know, the 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 name of the game is is scoring points. So there's definitely more volatility, I would say, in that style of play over a period of time. There's you're definitely more injury prone because you're out of the pocket. You don't have the types of, of protection that you, you typically have in the pocket. And I would say the one thing that's probably changed over the years in terms of why it's probably gone a little more this way is 
and I've, I've alluded to this in the past, I think they're calling more penalties on defensive players for hitting, you know, for violent contact. And I think when you're out of the pocket, you know, we got called on a play yesterday where Ryan Jensen's going basically to protect our, our runner and they throw an unnecessary roughness on an offensive lineman that I don't think would have been called, you know, five years ago. I don't think there's a lot of plays and hits that are happening on quarterbacks now that are flags for defensive players that probably weren't that way 10 or 15 years ago. So I'd say the game is a little softer than it used to be. You know, I think the defensive players are more on the defensive when they go into tackle. And I, I think that's probably adding to this element of quarterbacks outside the pocket and taking more chances, you know, than, than they did in the past. Are you going to try and ring the bell and come out for round number 50? You indicated to Gronk uh, earlier this week in a video that you did for the Buccaneers that you said you thought you could play at age 50. Were you kidding? Is that something you might want to accomplish? Can you expand on that? Well, I think Gronk asked if I thought I could in that whether I think I can or I will are two different things. So I think from my body standpoint, how I've been able to take care of myself over the years can put me in a position to do that. And you never know what can happen um, as I keep moving forward. I know I'm having a lot of fun playing. And again, at my age, it's really, you know, I've again agreed to play next year as well. But beyond that, you know, it'll just take it year by year. But I do think if I wanted to continue to do it, I have a really good routine. And um, again, I've talked about it ad nauseum. I think everyone can get tired of hearing me. I wrote a book on it about how to take care of yourself. And I'm hoping people adopt it. I'm hoping I can really inspire a lot of other people who don't think that or they think the limits have been set. And I think that people are blown through limits these days more than ever. So I put myself in a good position to, I think, even this year to compete really hard and play well. I'm going to try to do the same next year. And beyond that, we'll see. But I'm going to keep tightening up my routine a little bit more and more each year. Well, here's a guy who knows quite a bit about you. Bill Belichick, your former coach. Here's what he had to say about you playing to age 50 on WEEI this morning. Um, yeah, well, I'm sure Tom would know better than anybody, so if anybody could do it, it's probably him. Oh. Well, there you have it, short and concise, to the point. What do you think of that, Tommy? Yeah, I've always appreciated the encouraging words of Coach Belichick, so, and it served me pretty well. <laughs> It's funny you can hear encouragement in that. That that takes a certain tone, but you've been very used to that. Um, Ten straight wins. You achieved that while you were with the Patriots on three occasions. Now you've done that here. If you go back to last season uh, with the Buccaneers, you always tell us it's hard to win a game in the National Football League. What enables a team to be able to come together? And even if you don't play your best football, you come out on top. It's a good sign, I think, that you can win games when you play less than your best. And um, I still think we're scratching the surface. I think it's really cool when you look back at last year and, um, you know, what we did. That was great. But really, all that, everything we did last year, you know, you put in its own silo and you say, okay, what are we doing this year? And, you know, we started off the season against Dallas and played Played okay. There was a lot of things to clean up. We made some really critical plays at the end and won the game. Great game. And then yesterday, again, played a division opponent. Didn't quite play our best game, but found a way to win um, in the fourth quarter. Really a couple great defensive plays. And I think when we evaluate what we're doing, we realize we're leaving a lot out there. And that's an encouraging thing um, because I, it's good to win games knowing that you can still play a lot better. And I don't want to say that in a cocky way. I just want to say that in a realistic way. And you can learn from wins. You can learn from losses. Sometimes the losses sting and you really take the corrective criticism really to the point and that you take it really to heart. But listen, we're winning. And when we won these two games. We all come out of the game going, God, you know, it was just, there were some moments in there where we were just not playing the way we're capable of playing. How do we fix that? How do we correct that? How do we get more on the same page? How is our communication better? How do we do things at an even higher level? Because really, as the season goes, the competition gets tougher. They push you to be your best. And, you know, it's only two games in. This is a marathon that we're 
undertaking right now. And we're only, you know, two games in. So we've got a lot of room for improvement. There's a lot of things that can happen. What I do like is we practice better than what we've played. We've had some good practices the last few weeks. So that's always encouraging. I'm just excited where this team can keep growing to. We've got a lot of really high expectations that we have for ourselves. And believe me, I want to complete every single pass, every throw. I want it to be perfect. Every read, I want to be perfect. I talk to all my receivers all the time. I talked to Mike yesterday after the game. He's like, man, I, I ran some bad routes today. You know, and I'm like, Mike, get a great game. You know, AB is going, man, I, I'm going to do better for you, TB. And AB, you know, even though he didn't get a lot of touches, he did great. So, you know, again, I think we have a lot of high expectations. I'd much rather have those high expectations than have low expectations. Um, but we're not satisfied. We want to go out there and, and, and we want to play really well. And I think it's going to really reveal itself this coming week against a really good opponent in the Rams that we got to go to LA and we got to play a really tough team. That's very talented as well. And I think, um, we've got to, we got to have a great week to prepare for a really dominant defense that they've been over the last bunch of years. I'm wondering if you're starting to rub off on all these guys in Tampa now, because we've talked about it in the past about being tormented by being able to touch perfection and then wanting to be able to grasp it. But it's like a jellyfish and it slips away. So are the guys starting to feel that they can do it and you touch that for the moment in practice or for the moment in a game in a Super Bowl? And then you're always trying to get it back and now they're starting to have that same internal frustration, which can lead to greatness, but it also kind of makes you feel like, okay, we won the game, but we just didn't do as well as we could have. So they lose that momentary right. joy which a lot of guys right. in the NFL have because they won right. the game, but you guys are reaching for something further. Are you starting to wear off on them in that regard? Well, uh, yeah, and I, and I think you've got to appreciate the wins in the NFL, and you've got to appreciate the moments where it's very difficult. You know, again, we've talked for so long about how hard it is to win a game, you know, how everything is to bring you back to mediocrity in the NFL. And if you don't celebrate the wins, man, you know, life's going to, be way too short you know you've got to celebrate the wins I don't think you can turn a blind eye to the things that maybe you're not doing well consistently and I do think we have a culture of players that are really high achievers and I think you look at our tight end group you look at our running back group you look at our receiver group you look at our own line we our expectations are growing game after game after game in practice after practice after practice we realize when we communicate well when we can anticipate what we're going to do and we can anticipate each other's movements, how quickly and how flawless the execution can be. I think all those things are really allowing us to see where we can go and also see we're not close to being where we hope to be by the end of the season. As we continue with Tom Brady, hey, Tom, this seems almost impossible to me in year 22 that you have never played a game in Los Angeles. You're coming out here to play the Rams. You missed the Coliseum. You were at the Rose Bowl, but you didn't play with Michigan uh, back in college. It's almost unfathomable you could have had a career like this and not been out here. So what about just coming to Los Angeles and playing in front of that Hollywood crowd in this brand new, beautiful $5 billion stadium? It looks beautiful. I've heard amazing things and I've heard, you know, it's actually very loud the way they've done it. Um, I know I, I thinking back to the time I was at the Rose Bowl, I was a backup quarterback and uh, it was a majestic scene that night. We actually beat Washington State in the Rose Bowl. But outside of that, I had only played in San Diego. And when the Chargers were in the, um, the Home Depot Center, I never got a chance to play down there. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing for all these years in professional sports to not play in that market. So it'll be fun. It'll be really uh a great experience. I'm looking forward to flying out there. I got a lot of people coming. You know, the Rams are off to a great start, so they're going to be fired up. They'll have a lot of fans. There'll be a lot of people excited for football. Hopefully they have a sellout. There'll be a lot of juice. We'll be ready for it. And uh, we got our work cut out for us. Who's coming? I got my parents. Got a lot of friends. Got my sisters, nieces and nephews. A lot of my friends from LA. You'll be there. I got my crowd, a few people from my crowd at Riviera. They're coming. So it should be a great time. Let me warn you, Mike McCarthy says the clocks don't work. There's only 940. Everywhere you turn, there's an Oculus scoreboard. 
but you might have trouble finding them. Okay? So look I'm for the gonna, clock when you walk out on the field in the pregame. I'm going to get out there early and check it out. It's one of my pregame routines, so hopefully I'll be on top of my stuff. And, and along with all of those scoreboards and clocks, you're going to be scoreboard checking this weekend as well. It's your favorite event, and unfortunately you can't watch on Sunday, but it's uh, time for the Ryder Cup. And yeah. Everybody knows you love golf. and uh, Yeah. What makes this event so special to you? Why are you so enamored with it? It's an amazing event. I've had so many experiences in golf in my life that have helped me become who I am. And I think times on the golf course when I was with my dad as a kid, uh, that I just really loved the one-on-one time with my dad. It really became a part of who I am growing up because I learned a lot of lessons on the golf course. And, you know, you think golf is such an individual sport and I've love playing and, and so forth. But what I love seeing mostly is now that golf becomes a team sport because I've always played team sports. And when you have good teammates, it brings so much more out of you because you're playing for more than just yourself. You're playing for your team. You don't want to let your teammates down. And when I look at this event, that's what I see. I see you're playing with a team. You're playing and your countries are backing you and European countries are back in the European team and America's back in the American team. And you've taken this dynamic of which was an individual sport and you've turned into this amazing, strategic, complex event. And you've got the crowd into it. It's really the only time where you see golf crowds act more like football crowds. How hard do you think it is for guys to become team players when their whole life is is dictated and dedicated to only themselves and their performance. I'm sure it's got to be an adjustment. I mean, it'd be like me going out there and playing for myself as an individual. I mean, I've always tried to play as a team. And then I think uh, you try to go just play for yourself. It's going to be a very different emotional feeling. But I think for these athletes, for these golfers, and in particular, I think the Europeans have done an amazing job over the years of really coming together. They seem like they have great camaraderie, which is why I think they fare lately much better than the Americans have over the years. Yep, they've won four of the last five, including they'll be defending the cup this time. They won in 2018, then we had COVID in 2020, so it wasn't played up at Whistling Straits. Are you sorry you never had the opportunity to compete in an event for your country? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, it's a it's a great point. I think obviously the one I could, could, could have competed in would be football, and it's just not uh, around the world like some of these other sports, it's really an American sport. Um, It would be very cool to be able to do that. And I've always seen those basketball Olympians, you know, wearing the red, white, and blue and playing for the country and, you know, competing against other countries. You know, you see a lot of individual sports like tennis, they travel all over the world and play, Um, you know, and, you know, there's a lot of baseball, I would say in Japan, there's a lot of baseball in America, a lot of Latin American countries. Uh, football is so centralized to the U.S. So in, in one aspect, it, it feels huge when we're playing in America because it's, it is the most popular sport in America right now. But at the same time, you know, yeah, on, the, on a global worldwide scale, I'd love to see it continue to grow. And I think part of what the NFL does a great job is, again, playing games in the U.K. You know, we were scheduled at one point to go play games in China. We played games in Mexico. I've asked about playing games in South America where my wife comes from in Brazil. So I love the growth of the game, and especially in the digital age, the age of social media, the age of satellite television. It's much easier for everybody to see exactly what's going on with the world of football. And uh, you know, I think it's such a great game, challenges everyone physically, mentally, emotionally. And I think it's a sport that a lot of people would take to if they got to understand the rules a little bit more. We raise a couple of interesting things. First of all, Giselle, and also, you know, these European players, they want to be paid in Bitcoin when they're out on the European tour. And and you mentioned Giselle, you just did a commercial with her uh, about cryptocurrency. Um, These European golfers want to be paid. And do you think we'll ever see NFL players requesting payment in cryptocurrency? And do you think that the owners and the union would agree to something like that? Yeah, it's interesting. Interesting topic. I think it's much more on the, I think a few players have requested that. I'd love to request that to get paid in some crypto and, you know, to get paid in some Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana tokens. Um, I think it's it's an amazing thing that's happening in the world with 
the way the world is becoming more digital and these digital currencies, um, along with a lot of, if you look how the way the world is going, um, with all these different digital mediums and how they're impacting currencies. And really, if you look at data analytics, how much information has been able to be passed within teams and from team to team within the leagues, there's so many statistical variations in baseball and football. And it's really has changed so much to the way these sports are being played. So the digital age is upon us. I don't think we're ever going back. We're using the technology and information to uh, track things much better. And uh, I definitely see a world where players are going to be paid in cryptocurrencies in the future. What was it like to work with Giselle? I mean, you're, you're kind of stepping into her area doing the FTX commercial, even though you've done a number of them. What was it like for you guys to work together on something other than your family? It was really fun. She's an amazing actress. She's actually done some acting and she's very talented. So anytime I get to be with her, I really enjoy it. And when we can take a little bit of time at work, it's good for our relationship too. So the more time we're together, the usually the better it is for both of us. We love spending time together. The fact that we get to work together a little bit, our kids loved it. They thought it was very cool. And uh, I actually turned out loving the spot. So do your teammates and coaches talk to you about the spot? I just can't see you having a conversation in the locker room with Coach Arians about Bitcoin. It just, it just doesn't seem to add up here to me. I know, you know what, as quarterbacks, we talk about crypto, I'd say at least once a day, uh, check, everyone's checking in on, on kind of what the crypto markets are doing. It's kind of a fun thing for all of us to talk about. We're all a little, you know, volatile. Uh, quarterbacks are always measuring risk reward. Um, BA has always said no risk it, no biscuit. And, uh, you know, he's, that trickles into the quarterback room a little bit too. So, you know, and I think one thing about, you know, BA is, you know, he's such a, uh, if when I think about BA in in really the opportunity to play for him over the last year and a half, it's been really amazing how progressive and inclusive he really is. He goes out of his way to learn about our lives. Um, he stayed really current with the times, and even though he's a an older coach in the league, he's got a youthful spirit about him, and he obviously has our best interests in mind. Um, he's adapted to the times. We have such an inclusive group of people in our locker room and uh, us quarterbacks may be talking about Bitcoin and we're, we're sharing information with him about our investment tips. And uh, he's a hell of a leader for our team. So we're, uh, we're all working together. All right. Here are a couple of the uh, fans questions this week. Uh, we try and take the ones that we find most interesting. Uh, Tommy, what if there were an I in team? <laughs> There's, I'd be confused. I'd be confused. Team is about we, not me. This is a, a lesson I've learned going back since I've been 12 years old. So I love team sports, but that would be very confusing to me. <laughs> All right. Well, how much should someone be fined for wearing flip-flops on an airplane? <laughs> They'd be freezing. At that altitude, with their toes being blasted by the AC, they might catch a pneumonia. So I guess whatever they want, but they might pay for it in the end. Doesn't smell too well. That that's an automatic fine, Tommy. Hey, you find them then, scratch. You take them. You take them out. You got them. No, nope, I'm a, I'm gonna leave that to I'm gonna leave that to the commissioner, the commissioner of the air, whoever that might be. All right, as we continue here, how many almonds is too many almonds? Good question. Not enough. Not enough. I'm a big almond guy. Cocoa dipped almonds, almonds in my smoothie in the morning. I probably have quite a few over the course of the day, 30 to 50, maybe. 50 almonds? 50. President Sounds Obama right. used to set out just seven at night before he did his work to go to sleep. So he rationed seven. You're up to 50. 50. I guess you're a little more active than President Obama was. He was in good shape. He's a great basketball player. I've always, he's got a lot of good skill in hoops. So he's quite an athlete himself and a golfer too. Absolutely. Maybe we'll have him on at some point to talk about almonds and football. Let's go. Let's get him. All right, Tom, uh, speaking of influential people, you were named uh, by Time Magazine to the list of 100 most influential people in 2021. With that in mind, uh, is there anyone that you've been unable to influence? <laughs> I got three little kids running around this house that think I don't know anything. 
They, I know nothing in this house. So whoever thinks they might think that I'm influential, I got three little munchins that absolutely think I know nothing. Hey, Tommy, it sounds like Vivi's coming in the room. What do you think, Vivi? You think, Daddy, you, you ever listen to your dad? Uh, yes. She does. Everyone you do? Lots of yes. Wow. What's the best advice he's given you? What's the best advice Daddy's given you? You are really strong. And you can do anything you believe in. Amen. Some great advice my parents gave me, too. They said, they said Tommy, I wanted to be a football player. I wanted to go to college, and I wanted to play. That My parents never discouraged me from doing that. As long as odds as those were, my parents said, if that's what you want, that's what we're going to do to support you. So if there's any parents out there listening, I think you don't ever really set limits on your kids, man, because I was one of those kids that – It was a long shot for me to get to play professional football. There was a lot of guys that were much more talented me in high school and college. And they were always telling me, you could do it. You could do it. And I encourage every parent out there to tell their kids, you could do it. You could do it. Don't ever hold back from what you think your dreams are made of. And whatever you think you can achieve, go after it with everything you got. Ask Vivi what her dream is right now at this age. Vivi, I got a question for you. What's your dreams? Do you have any Um, special dreams? I want to be a veterinarian. But I think I'm going to be that for a little while. And I'm going to make an own place that I can take care of all animals yep. in the wild. I'm planning on doing that. But I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it could change. Yeah. I really want to be one. Yeah, she loves animals. She loves animals and take care of animals. She's a lot like her mom. She's a lot <laughs> like her mom. She takes care of the animals. She takes care of Mother Nature. And uh, she's a very compassionate young girl. Well, that's great. It's great to have Vivi Brady on. Tom, thank you for your time. I know that Vivi wants you to take care of those next animals you've got coming. Uh, The Rams uh, out in Los Angeles. We look forward to talking to you next Monday night. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, guys. Look forward to it. Have a great week. That's it for this video. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. So please like and subscribe. That way you'll always have a new Tom Brady video to watch every single day. 